whether or not the civil service needs reforming. MPs have launched a new inquiry have, uh, into the future of the civil service. We've already had uh, Francis, Lord Francis Moore uh, looking into uh, possible sort of more overt politicisation, official politicisation of senior figures in the civil service. And of course, after the battles between Dominic Raab and the civil service, and indeed other ministers, Priti Patel, as when she was Home Secretary and her government, uh, her, her civil servants, uh, is there an issue uh, there? Let's talk to Dave Perman. He's General Secretary of the First Division Association Union, representing senior civil servants. Good morning to you, Dave. Morning, Joe. Thank you so much for jo joining us. I mean, going back to Dominic Raab and and um, and also Priti Patel and others. Um, Dominic Robb did have to leave office. He said if there were any findings against him, two of the eight uh, cases that were investigated uh, by Adam Tolley KC found that he had acted inappropriately. Um, but the other cases were not found to have stood up. Um, is there, as he and others suggest, a, a campaign by some, not all, but some activists, politicised civil servants to oust um, particular ministers, whether it's because simply they're Tory or because they're Brexiteer or for other reasons? Well, that's not what the independent KC found. He found in his report that there was no collusion, that all of the complaints had been legitimately made. Donald Rabb actually accepted that as well when he was being um, uh, interviewed about it. So the fact that someone can legitimately make a complaint um, and it's not found doesn't mean that actually they've made it up or they're targeting a minister. I'll be honest with you, this is just third rate from Dominic Rabb. He's been found to have bullied staff. He's been found to have humiliated, acted aggressively, acted in a way that was punitive. And if you look at the report, the Tolly report, it actually says that he was warned about his behaviour, though he denied it and denied it publicly um, uh, several times, and that he did not amend his behaviour. And the only time he actually amended his behaviour was when complaints went in. And Tolly says almost the last paragraph of his report that he should have done that before. His behaviour should have changed before that. So it's not about a campaign, it's about people working with ministers, legitimately raising concerns about their conduct and ministers rightly being held to account for that conduct. Um, I mean, I mean, this is this is the the, the, the trouble, isn't it? Because we you know one person's bullying is is uh, is another person. So if we say robust management, as some are saying, this, it certainly seems with this Tolly report that it was very um, very detailed and 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 it certainly wasn't a whitewash on either side. There's no question at all about that. And so perhaps uh, uh, you know we can trust his findings. But again, even the things that he is accused of doing, there are many people who say, well, that's not bullying. Now you can use the word bullying, but I've got to be honest with you, I think most people under the age of 25 now think that someone saying hello in the wrong tone of voice is bullying these days. Um, a lot of people have a different idea what bullying is. Of course, and that's why you have these sorts of investigations, because clearly, you know, you can have robust managers. People sometimes get messages that they don't like about the performance of what's going on. And so when people raise concerns about behaviours, you need to find a way that how do you make a judgment of these things? How do you determine whether something's been done reasonably uh, or not. And that's what Tolly did. Tolly actually, uh, if you look at the report, made an assumption about one of the key issues that, that, that Rob was found to have bullied the civil servant about and said, I'll assume that you were actually right to raise concerns about this. He wasn't making a judgment about it, but he said, I'll just assume that that was the case. Did you do it in the right way? And found that he didn't. He actually went way beyond what was necessary and he introduced what he called a punitive element in relation to, to what he did with threats around the civil service code. So, of course... But hold on a minute. Why is, it, why is it a threat to say to someone that, you know, I, I think you've breached the civil service code, um, as indeed it was a Spanish ambassador. I mean, certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it was gross misconduct. He should be sacked on the spot for going against the British government policy as a well, diplomat. You know, that is a breach of the dip of civil service code. Telling someone, I think you should... I think you should be, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call in the code. Why is that a threat? That's a perfectly reasonable thing for a boss to say. Well, first of all, you're assuming that what Dominic Rabb is now saying is correct, and that's not necessarily the case in relation to the facts of it. Secondly, if you threaten someone with a sack when it's not appropriate, that is an inappropriate... Well, I think it was, but right. most people, like most businesses, if you did what that ambassador did, the equivalent, you'd be sacked on the spot, and you, you know, should be. Frankly, you should be tried for treason. You're, you're assuming Dominic Rabb's version of events is correct, but actually Tolly assumed Dominic Rabb was correct. Tolly actually said, I will assume that actually you're raising a legitimate criticism here. The way you, you raised that criticism and the way you behaved with that individual was bullying. So Tolly actually took all of that out of it and still said an independent KC that was appointed by the Prime Minister yep. that Dominic Rabb was a bully. Okay. 
Um, in terms of how we move forward on this, you know, in terms of having politicised civil service, the whole point we've always had was, oh, this is amazing civil service doing an amazing job, first class, and they and they're you know public servants. Um, it just doesn't feel like that to most people. Whether it's you can't get your passport, you can't get a driving test, you can't um, you know we can't airlift people out of Kabul and process things. We can't seem to. We don't have. We don't bother having you know ambassadors and uh, uh, and their deputies in the country at the same time in countries like Sudan that are war torn. I mean, whatever it is, we, um, people working from home. We've got demands in the Welsh Senate for the for, for public servants to take no pay cut at all but to move to a four-day week. There is a general feeling from an awful lot of people like me and others in the private sector that there are an awful lot of people in the public sector who are no longer sort of these high-flying, brilliant people who are serving the people and getting the work done at the, you know, at the behest of democratically elected politicians. But actually, they're just sort of working for their own either political aims or, or frankly, just sitting on their backsides, twiddling their fingers, pretending to work from home. Um, why do we have that perception if it's not the true reality? Well, of course, that's the problem. Could what you end up is these kind of generalities for um, political ends rather than actually examining the facts around what the civil service does or how it operates. Compl government's complex. So one of those issues you talk about is about accountability. And this is one of the things that the committee is looking at. Where does accountability lie between ministers and officials? Officials are concerned about this as well because there are lots of issues which are about political choices. They will say to a minister, you can have that or you can have that minister, but you can't have both or you can have that, but it's going to cost you money. And you make political choices around it. And then when things go wrong, the, the fingers start to point. And one of the, the problems the civil service has is that it can't defend itself. You know, it's not, it does not have an ability... Well, it can, because it goes and feeds stories to the BBC, which then turn out to be totally untrue. Julia, why, why do you think people do that? Because they don't have any other avenue... No, no, no that's not true. There was all That's being a whistleblower when there's no-one taking your complaint seriously. There was a KC appointed by the Prime Minister investigating these very allegations. It was already being dealt with, and yet they still went to the BBC and gave their version of events. Should those people be investigated and possibly it not, disciplined? It was Dominic Rab and his allies of Dominic Rab talking to the press as well what has Dominic they Rabb weren't though since? they weren't he never what, gave what a has, statement what has Dominic Rabb done since the report that he said he was since on since the report he's since he's resigned you're allowed to speak out after you've resigned are you allowed to name people are you allowed to victimize people are you allowed to, victimize. to damage the credibility of the entire process throughout this entire process Dominic Rabb and his allies have been making comment about it if you want to talk more generally about the civil service, on any issue you're talking about, whether it's the performance of the civil service or not, the civil service does not get to defend itself. And, and over the last few years, ministers haven't defended it either, because that's the compact. The compact is you're not allowed to talk publicly. You can't defend yourself. It's actually against the civil service code. Yeah, but they did, but they're not, none of them are going to be disciplined, are they? And, and therefore, ministers have a duty to protect the civil service. So when you have one side of an argument, thrown a series of accusations about the civil service, and you have no one defending it on the other side. No, it was being investigated by. It was, we've had we've had non-stop briefing by civil servants against Suella Braverman, against Priti Patel, against Dominic Raab. I can't imagine what those three people happen to have in common. Eh? Was this to be Priti Patel who was found guilty of shouting and swearing at civil servants oh, and of willing civil awful. servants and a prime minister who refused to take action about it? Mm. If you does, any, does anyone discipline? Day, look, I'm not saying that's justifiable, but does any? When it was established. By the way, that Dominic Raab had not shouted, had not sworn, had not thrown anything, hadn't so done any of those things that he was accused of in, by, was, by people really. in the media. No, no. But but does anyone discipline? For, does anyone actually ever discipline civil servants for not doing their sodding job properly? I wouldn't be in a job if civil servants weren't disciplined for not doing their job. Neither would any other trade union. We every day deal with, as any organisation does, people who don't perform well and represent them or people who are disciplined. Once again, one of the myths that goes on about the civil service and goes unchallenged because the government have a duty to defend the civil service and they don't do it. So you end up with a one-sided argument on this. Okay. I'm glad there's a parliamentary committee going to look at this issue because at least we might get some evidence rather than just the kind of rhetoric that okay. we end up with in the press. Dave Penman, very good to talk to you. A robust conversation. I hope we're not going to make complaints about each other afterwards. General Secretary of the First Division Association Union, thank you for that.